Hey everybody, welcome back to the Future Crew. Today we have Grok 4, finally came out. We're going to see if all the hype is real, if this really is the smartest model out there. It's showing great on benchmarks, but as we know, benchmarks don't tell the whole tale, so we'll put it through its paces. We've got a coding challenge, we got some business reasoning, and finally the maze test. Let's dig in. Okay, so we're all set up for our coding test. We're, today we're going to do uh, our classic city generation test. We have a long prompt. It should be familiar to folks on the channel where we're asking for a bunch of features. We want city streets, we want different districts, um, and we want some simulation features like time of day and a pen, uh, potentially NPCs and cars roaming around. So we'll get that sent off, and uh, Grok4 is thinking. Grok has come back. It only thought for about 20-something seconds, but it did come back with a fairly sizable chunk of code, so we'll get that loaded up and see what it was able to put together. Oh. 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 Okay, we have districts. That's interesting. It's That's got some cool very weird camera controls. We definitely have visible districts. In, yeah. Cars are in no way following anything resembling the road. <laughs> They're just sort of going diagonal often. I think, yeah, I was going to say, are they going diagonally? Just drifting through walls and... All building. cars are knights in chess. Uh, we have like some controls for the... Oh, we have sandbox mode. It's telling me I can click to create buildings. Let's see how that works. Not seeing that. So... At least it was maintaining sandbox mode state, but it doesn't seem to work. It's ambitious. Okay. Um, this is the density. Oh. Well, I think, you know, we, we have something to work with here. It's it's not, obviously, not the best result we've seen, but we're going to push it to see uh, how far it's able to get. So we are asking for an overall visual pass so that it doesn't look so much like a graphing calculator or 3D bar chart. And we are also seeing if Grok 4 can constrain the cars to the roads. So Grok is back. It's made an attempt to fix the cars and the visuals, and we'll see how well it did. Hey. Okay. So we're seeing the cars stay on the roads. A big improvement. It seemed to have added uh, chimney stacks in the industrial district. We've the got our day-night cycle going. Have wrapped up a building, though. Yeah, two waters. I think those are just buildings, and those are just special type of building. The blue wait, buildings. Wait, but the river's definitely going through the buildings, right? Like, look in the kind of yeah. center. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The river is a tube of sorts. Yeah. yeah. It's, got, it's got height. Cars also can <laughs> drive through the river. I mean, technically, they're adhering to the roads. Just the river also does not adhere to the roads. Bridges are not par properly simulated. All right. But realistically, this is a good result, right? I mean, this is hmm. on par with, if not better than what we've seen. It's got a day cycle. Right. It's, I think, the only model to have added a curvy river, even if it is a little bulbous. <laughs> the camera controls remain a little bit weird. like A little weird, although it's still it, it pretty... It seems better than last uh, time. Better than maybe last not. time for... Well, maybe not. Well, yeah. yeah. It did make new varieties thing. of buildings. The height is substantially reduced. Mm -hmm. And we have smokestacks, I guess? Yeah. Let's see if we can push it one more time on overall visual quality and, and we'll do our normal ask of bringing it down to first person and giving us something to do as the player. All right, we're really pushing it. We're giving it our sort of first challenge mode of asking for another big upgrade. We want uh, really visually appealing. We, we're trying to push it in that cozy game direction so it can stay sort of low poly and maybe get something that looks nice. Uh, and then we're, as as usual, asking for a first-person camera and then something for that player to do in first-person. Can add a nice sky. Do you think the tools only work in Grok Super Heavy? Or, like, what I, you know, I'm not seeing any indication of there being tools for it to go find textures on the internet. Yeah, I'm not seeing that either. For context, for folks who didn't see the live stream, they showcased a game that uh, they claimed it went out and looked for textures on the internet, brought them down, applied them. You saw some box textures. You saw a... Uh, material on the gun. It looked like kind of a Doom clone. Uh, so really impressive. We're not seeing that in our test. We are not using Grok Super Heavy. That was uh, 300 bucks a month, so we didn't make that upgrade for this video, but we'd still expect that tool used. So Grok 4 came back. We have its attempt at this sort of like big production level game push that we're asking for. Uh, and let's load it up. The black screen of death. There's a bug. I've seen it before. There is a bug. We will we'll ask. We'll give it one shot to fix the bug. Let's see if it was able to fix that error. No. Oh. Yeah, it, it lost context on it. So I'm not sure what it's trying to do now. It's got the CDN. So I know this isn't super heavy, but you would expect this to be accomplishable, right? I wouldn't expect to have to make a $300 upgrade to do a low poly attempt at a first person camera. The only thing is it's, it has like a working example in the in the chat history and it's just kind of like failing to do the... Uh, should we give it one more go? Yeah, we'll give it, we'll give it one more go. <laughs> I'll tell it it's its last try. Okay. Oh! Oh! God, it's bright. Oh. Oh, We're getting okay. Okay. sun flared. 
Oh, I'm in the river. Oh, nice. Just the bulbous river is still there. You're also gigantic. You're like... I'm a Godzilla. Yeah, Godzilla. Oh, look at this. Ad. I mean, okay, first, you know, we'll give it some credit that it figured out its error eventually after a couple tries. We do have working first-person controls. It did. It tried to do something crazy with the atmosphere. It's definitely calculating it, but, like, sort of procedurally, but it's got... Oh, wow. Um, is there a sun? There is a and sun. A yeah. It's, it's just hard to sun. see the sun usually because it's really bright during the day. You switch over, yeah, there you go, boom. Yeah, I see. Yeah, you can see the blue sky. And the light. That's so, pretty yeah, impressive. Just, yeah. Yeah, the problem is just like the sun is <laughs> extraordinarily bright. We do have a, oh, we have a little, little park. We have a little park. I am wondering if it can like, uh, one of my goals is to get to downtown. So let's see if we can do that yeah, yeah, and yeah. if it will actually correctly. So. It has marked off some achievements, but the ones it marked off are the ones that are true out of the gate. Right. This, uh, that looks like downtown, I would imagine. So we'll head over here. I'm not seeing any, uh, I'm definitely downtown. Sort of a, a residential area with some, <laughs> I guess these are supposed to be brownstones. All right. So, uh, you know, we got to something that's sort of on par with the best thing we've seen, I would say, in the, on this test. We're not seeing like a, a step change improvement, but I'm encouraged by the fact that we, you know, we were able to eventually work through that problem with a couple iterations. We were talking about the demoed ability to pull textures and, and potentially even models from the internet. As a pure challenge mode, we'll try to prompt it to do that and see if it can get anything working using that capability that they claim it has all right it's back it's back it searched 86, 86 web pages web pages it tried wow. to include things as modules i'm not like necessarily thinking high chance of success but we'll see what happens hey <laughs> we have grass hey i got grass <laughs> this is kind I of mean, incredible whoa. it's hilarious i mean hey it, it failed it did with something. buildings yeah but it did it was able to find a a grass image and this is, is hilarious we haven't seen well, before do we think that's a function of not prompting for it before or is this actually a net new ability no it's not a net new ability it didn't use any special tools to do this it just like found some link on the internet that worked for grass at least somewhat credit that it was able to do this i know it kind of cooked everything i'm guessing like the everything i was going black is probably because the shade is it or whatever the texture it used yeah it failed to load it, right? yeah yeah is there any like errors there are. So impressive to see that it was able to find something and get something that works for the grass. Not not something I'll be using in my own development anytime soon. But overall, so far looking like an impressive release. Not blowing us away yet. We'll see if its business reasoning capabilities are a step change. All right. So we've got uh, our business reasoning test set up. We're going to do the two-leg approach where we first ask the model to research and gather a bunch of information about all the latest developments in AI models, benchmarks, etc. And then once it has gathered all that information, we'll ask it to do a pass uh, to create an analysis, including charts and recommendations. This is the first prompt for the research phase, and we'll kick it off. We got a response back. We just did a quick read through so we could check it over. Overall, Grok did a good job here. Again, not blowing us away, but a good job. It was able to gather correctly all of the latest models, which has not always been the case. We noticed that the, the O3 series was actually kind of surprisingly struggling with that, even though deep research is quite good at this task. So across OpenAI, Google, Meta, other providers, it was able to reliably find the most recent models. It gave this sort of overview section uh, with a description of each model, uh, the highlights of the benchmarks. And at first we were thinking, well, uh, you know, th that's not detailed benchmark information. But then as we scroll down, we can see that it actually did create some comparison tables, again, with a limited number of benchmarks, just with sort of averaging across a couple of coding and math benchmarks. Uh, and they're not all numbers. And then it also tried to collect information on parameter count and sort of correctly was saying that most models don't specify their size. All right, so now we can move on to our analysis portion. And because it doesn't have super detailed benchmark data, we are going to include uh, a note in this prompt for to push the model to continue doing search before it completes its analysis to gather more benchmark results. But we'll type up that prompt and get it sent off. And it's off. We are expecting it to begin by searching and gathering some more benchmark results and then moving on to generate generating charts and recommendations. Tools will be used to search for recent benchmarks. It's going for a lot of like these uh, like arenas and stuff. It failed. Interesting. Can we just retry? Yeah, I'll just have it retry. So we, we just took a read through of the analysis we are a bit concerned and we'll walk through to show you why so the first part it made some some good observations like high level observations about industry trends so we were excited to continue looking through the response you can read through this if you want then it moved on to sort of describing its visualization strategy and if you see this like to make these improvements i'll use charts it it 
reads, we were all feeling that it reads kind of like thinking tokens, which was sort of interesting to see it do some chain of thought in the actual response and the style of its normal chain of thought. It planned out a pretty limited set of charts, and then it started by generating the Python for those charts. The cool thing about the Grok client is we were able to run the Python in line here just from the code block. It doesn't have a code interpreter tool per se, but you can run code blocks, you know, spit out the resulting charts right here. So it started with a performance trend analysis that just averages across a couple key benchmarks that it collected. One of the columns is just GPT 4.5 slash 03. Not sure how it pulled together those uh, results. It was sort of fudging the numbers a little bit in the data itself. And then it made a pretty simple chart. You can open source the code if you want to take a look through and see how it was doing this projection. And the only other chart it included was a breakdown of benchmarks across models. This is a little bit more useful because it's not collapsing unlike benchmark scores into one sort of representative average that has little meaning. It has uh, each benchmark with its own bar. And so you can compare across different model categories. I would say that this is the most useful part of the response to me, is that one chart there. Far more and far more insightful, far more detailed chart portions with other models. So this is not keeping up with the current state of the art. And then moving on to its recommendation, it recommended Llama 4 as its primary recommendation. And its justification was about it being sort of open source essentially that it's free and customizable and you're not locked into any individual vendor this is a very strange recommendation given that it's nowhere near the best model or the best bang for your inference buck model so even though it is free to grab the weights it's not free to run inference uh, and so it was missing that sort of cost and value perspective in its analysis and its alternative recommendations also miss any sort of value or pure intelligence analysis. It recommends itself the free tier of XAI Grok 3 as a alternative easy to use option, which is interesting. It seems a little bit like there might be some prompting telling it to be nice to itself. And then for efficiency and on device, it recommends 5.4. So we are seeing a you know, a reasonable third point there, you know, that's definitely the, the leading on device open source model. Weird to see it base its primary recommendation so much on open source freedoms and so little on value or pure intelligence. And then interesting to see it recommend itself while OpenAI and Anthropic were completely excluded from the recommendations. Well, and it seems like sentiment's completely removed here. Like it didn't do any sort of analysis to realize, hey, generally people didn't like Llama 4. It wasn't giving trustworthy results. Hey, uh, OpenAI is not advocating use of 4.5. A stunning lack of, of nuance in the analysis, I think. I, this is beneath the last few runs of this test, for sure. And as a report, it also this is kind of vibe based, but this is not so unfortunate performance on business reasoning. So far, we've seen sort of up to par on the coding a bit behind on business reasoning. So a lot is resting on this on this last test of general agentic reasoning, which we which we use our in house maze test. So we'll get that set up. So we've got the maze test set up. We're going to start it with a 20 by 20 maze. That's around the, you know, the highest test that we've been able to complete so far with other models. We're not necessarily expecting it to get this, but if it does, that'll be really promising. Uh, and then we can adjust the maze size based on its performance on this first maze. So the tool lets us copy a prompt, which is just a text-based version of the maze, and we'll go paste that over into chat. We can sometimes also do include an image, but we've seen that confuse models in the past, so we'll start off with just the text description of the maze, and we'll see if it's able to solve it. So we have a response. It's right to the point with our uh, coordinate format, and we'll get it checked. And it failed, close. unfortunately. It got Only close, one. it got quite close. And look, that, you know, that's at least somewhat promising. I'm assuming it just kind of messed up on the pure text representation. I wonder if we can redo this with an image to see if that helps it just kind of correct itself. But the fact that it did code execution means it was at least close. It didn't just totally hallucinate, it got mm -hmm. kind of close. So we've got a new maze, prompt copied in, image loaded. We'll send it off. Hey, we got a okay. We got a response. Let's uh, put it in. All right. Okay. Success. Success. Yep, yep, yep. So, so it was image. right on the edge with just the text. Yep. It was right on the edge with 20. We gave it the text and the image. It was able to successfully do 20. So this is pretty much on par with 03, if I remember correctly. So, you know, I'm starting to develop this conclusion here where it's like definitely a good model. Is it some step change difference than the top class of models available across Grok's competitors? I don't think so. What do you guys think? I think no, so. no. 
I, think I so mean, let this. us know in the comments. We're, we it might be worth doing the coding tests in an IDE to see if that helps at all. Lack of business reasoning is a little bit worrying, right? Like, I, I mm -hmm. do wonder, and there is this case now of like benchmark scores not always correlating with real world performance, right. and something like business reasoning when you like ask it, you know, like trying to develop an opinion. It's quite a common use case. Like, it's very rare that you just like nail just like a coding thing, and oh, this is very easy like mathematical problem. Um, so it remains to be seen. You know, these are just tests that we try to represent each of these areas. I think it needs some more real world testing. But I agree with Jacob's sentiment of like, this definitely doesn't seem like bad, right? Out the gate, it seems to be like pretty good. But I, you know, again, don't think it's a step change. I'm not feeling that, oh, wow, it's AGI, but it seems to be at least in the running for like a pretty, pretty useful model. If someone's like, I'm going to use Grok4 as a daily driver, I'd be like, okay, like it, it could probably do that. And I do think that's an interesting point. It's like, why are the benchmarks so much better? I mean, there's an op there's a possibility that just like it, its intelligence isn't showing up on our tests. Again, these are a couple anecdotal tests. We'd love to hear from the viewers in the comments. What have you guys seen in your own testing and your own daily use? But I do have a little bit of a suspicion that there was some serious effort to optimize towards the benchmarks to get like a really impressive looking set of benchmark results. Um, and that might have been there might have been more energy put into that than at the average company. All of them are trying to get good benchmark results, but they're also trying to get really good usage numbers and really good feeling from their users when they use the model day to day. And so uh, with such outsized benchmark gains, but similar day to day, sometimes worse day to day experience, it's sort of making me a little nervous that Grok is really benchmark optimization heavy. But again, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll reserve my judgment until... Uh, I play around with it more and I hear from you all in the comments and see see what you guys are feeling with the model. I think that makes sense from their position in the market too, right? They're the underdog. They're the one that's doubted. So it, I could see the pressure internally to really get great benchmark results so they can be seen in the same class as OpenAI or Anthropic. I can't explain why the business reasoning was so much worse than the coding and the reasoning tests, but both the coding and the reasoning tests were... Pretty on state, of the, state art. of the art, and then the business model was measurably worse. So definitely let us know what you guys are seeing with the model. We might do a follow up with Super Grok. Let us know how badly you want to see that. We definitely want to gauge interest before spending three hundred dollars on the subscription, uh, and especially after the sort of confusing performance here. Not jumping on Super Grok, but we'll we'll keep monitoring, monitor the comments, monitor the rest of social media, um, uh, and we'll be back soon with a new video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks, everybody.